So, as I've been looking at putting the studio back together, I started thinking about wanting to do a diffusive rear wall, which is what we do in most of the studios that we do. So I contacted a bunch of the manufacturers that we specify products for, millions of dollars of products for. One million dollars. And I said, hey guys, what kind of a deal can you give me on some diffusers? And they came back and said, well, we'll get you a good price. So we got these prices where things were 60, 70, $80 a square foot. Now, admittedly, they're worth it because of what they are and what they do acoustically. Um, those of you who aren't familiar, diffusers are designed to take sound that's going behind your head when you're mixing, break it up so you don't get a direct specular reflection that would make you make mixed decisions that don't necessarily reference out in the real world. <clears throat> Previously down here, I had a completely absorptive back wall using the big blue fabric panels you've seen in other videos. But on this one, I want diffusion. So I decided I'd start looking around for things that didn't cost that kind of money. Too expensive. I'm not doing stuff for, you know, Columbia Records. Too expensive. I mean, this is just me doing stuff for myself, but I wanted something different. So one of the first things I did is in the process, I moved my mix position forward from where it used to be. It used to be much further back. Uh, also added the big video monitor back there for running Logic. And then I decided to start looking for products. So since the ones I usually specify were exorbitantly expensive, I decided to look on Amazon. Now, Amazon's an interesting place. They have things like $10 microphones that are spectacularly good for the money. And you kind of wonder, gee, do they have something in acoustic diffusers? So I started looking. So a bunch of things came up, but first let's talk about what an acoustic diffuser is and what it isn't. An acoustic diffusion occurs when an obstruction is at least a seventh of a wavelength. You really gotta get your math thing out and do the speed of sound and the wavelength and figure out how long these things are. But a seventh of a wavelength will break up a certain sound wave. So diffusers that break up really, really high frequencies have very narrow things built into them. They're far more expensive. The ones that have less of that don't work as well, but for a home studio or for you know a video studio, podcast studio, may be very adequate. The other factor is that a diffuser should not absorb sound dramatically at any weird frequencies, and some of them do. So when you're looking into diffusion, you gotta look at how these things are built. So let's talk about what you're seeing here. Now I did off angle lighting. So you see the shadows occurring in these devices. This is a copy of something that I won't use a brand name because I don't want to get anybody weird. Shh, you wanna get sued? But it's a whole bunch of wells. Let's just talk about these for a minute. Sorry. So all of these wells are different depths and the spacing obviously is regular on this one. But the formula that's supposed to determine these well depths is what's known as a quadratic formula. And this is not an exactly real quadratic formula. You've got a deep well, mid well, mid well, deep well, mid well. They don't have all of the breakups in some of the really expensive ones, but Compared to a piece of drywall behind your head, this actually would probably work very well, and I'm probably gonna use some of these. So the next thing we were looking at is the ones that are very expensive come pre-finished, which is nice, because finishing this requires a spray gun, and I've got one, I'll probably spray these. But the other thing is I wanted to make sure it wasn't resonant, wasn't absorbing lower mid-frequencies because of shoddy construction. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. It, it looks maybe like poplar, but since it's made probably in China, it could be something else. You are made of stupid. Uh, it showed up in a box with zero damage. I started banging on things. I had one of these from one manufacturer. When I did this, the pieces fell out. So that's not one you want. But this one from Amazon, which is, I think this was $115 or something, which means it's a four square feet for $115 versus buying this for let's say $700 pre-finished made out of, let's say, oak or maple. Now, admittedly, oak and maple are pretty, but acoustically, for normal human beings in small studios with minimum budgets, this is a really good product. The other thing I was impressed with is that the back is not a piece of Luan or something really cheesy. It's a piece of relatively solid plywood. It looks to be quarter inch. Well put together, staples and glue. Definitely a nice product and one that I'm probably gonna use down here, I just gotta decide how many of which I wanna buy, 
The only negative to this is spraying this with a stain or a paint because of all the wells, it's easy to get drips and other problems. So I'm debating whether I want to hassle with all of that or not. But this was one of my first choices because I really like this type of diffuser. It's a two-dimensional diffuser. It does a really great job. This one, because it's only four inches deep, do the math. No. No, I don't think I will. It's probably 500 hertz end up, does a fair amount of diffusion. I played a speaker towards this, then I played a speaker towards a wall, which is a demo I may record when I get the studio fully fixed up. And the difference was noticeable off axis. There was a whole bunch of frequencies getting sent off axis that weren't when it was firing directly into drywall. So that's one of the products I looked at. And this is from Amazon. The next one I looked at is the traditional quadratic diffuser. But once again, this is not exactly a quadratic diffuser. The wells are quite wide. The ones that are far more expensive have much, many more wells at different depths following the quadratic formula more precisely. But once again, a little bit of resonance here and there, relatively easy to finish. And if you put some of them in this way and some of them in this way in a pattern on your wall, you'll get a fairly wide range of diffusion limited by the depth again. But once again, much nicer than firing into a piece of drywall. And same thing, the construction of this, having gone through it, banged on it, beat on it, everything about it, very comparable construction to the other one we're looking at. And not bad looking, it even has some grain. If you didn't think this was oak, you might think this was oak based on the grain. So some wood that you could fake oak with. It's a fugazi, it's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. But they're both nice. I'm gonna order a bunch more. Then we'll see what their consistency is like. But I found both of these products to be really good options for low cost diffusive treatments in a room. Some of the current thinking, and we just did a, um, a studio for a classical radio station recently. We did this diffuser that's from another manufacturer that's very expensive. Uh, but the thinking from some of the higher end engineers now is to not have absorption on the sidewalls, is to have diffusion on the sidewalls around your mix position and overhead. So I'm not sure if I want to try to stick any of these in the ceiling. It may not even fit with my joist spacing. But diffusion above is another thought. And so that's where I got into this thing. Now this is once again on Amazon. This is $18. And it's cool looking. Um, when you get into looking at the facets of it, this is not as deep as that. So this is going to be more of a mid, upper mid high frequency, like maybe 1K to 2K is where it's going to kick in. It'll do a lot above that. But one of the, there's a video online from one manufacturer where they drop a bunch of ping pong balls on top of something like this and they show that the ping pong balls, when they hit the floor, bounce straight up. When they hit this, they go this way, this way, this way. And that's all true. So this thing is made of wood. It's got a wood backer. It weighs very little. It's a uh, you know, one square foot for 18 bucks. And kind of cool looking. And there's a whole bunch of other stuff they've got. I just ordered some samples. This I'm thinking seriously of putting on my door, which I can't really put anything else on because it's I can't hang anything heavy on the door and I don't want anything thick. So I'm probably going to use these down here on sidewalls, doors, and other locations. May or may not try to attach it to a 24 inch piece where I could mount this into a ceiling grid. Take a piece of, you know, I don't know, quarter inch plywood and attach a bunch of these to it. Uh, to have to look at the weight and see if the grid's going to be happy with it. But this is another really cost-effective diffuser through Amazon that is acoustically competitive with things that cost dramatically more money. I've seen some of these in certain woods where it's like $70 a square foot or $100 a square foot. No, 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 no. That's a scam. Now, some of them have much more depth and more variation. But in the real world, most people are battling between either putting fiberglass panels on the wall, which is good in some areas, or, you know, some sort of, um, you know, fab or not fabric, uh, vinyl, not vinyl, what is it? Foam, foam, that stuff. Haven't used that in a while. Foam products, which absorb sound at various frequencies or putting in something that diffuses sound. And the correct balance of all of this, you do with formulas or modeling software. In my case, it'll be modeling software, but the values of these, because they're all relatively solid, they're not going to absorb much. They're primarily going to provide diffusion. 
And yes, I'll probably run down to, uh, what's the name of the company I shouldn't mention? Home Depot, and probably buy some stains and work on some things there. So we'll get some links to these on the, uh, the video at the end of this. Those guys that do my videos will do that for me. I'll probably send them the links so they know where they are. And these are good options. At least what I've seen, the quality is significantly higher than I ever would have expected for this kind of money. And yes, I'm going to incorporate Amazon products here. Now the one caveat, I don't think I'd ever put these into any of our commercial jobs because I don't have any proof of fire rating from anyone on these. So you have to be aware that woods are typically class B, sometimes class C. You need class A if you're putting it in a, in a commercial environment. In residential, you can burn yourself up any way you want. So it doesn't really matter. You could spray these with a fire treatment, but you have to do that so many times a year. I don't remember how many years it lasts on woods. But that's one caveat to this, is this is not a fire rated product. So I can't use this in a professional commercial application, but I could definitely use it in my basement. So that's it for today. I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe, press the button thing. Uh, the guys, the video guys like that when that happens. And hopefully you enjoyed this and this will be informative. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>